Until now, our work has mainly been with harmony that stays in one key. But of course, often music doesn't stay in one key. It modulates. Why? The modulation changes the scale and or the tonal center for a while. The change may be very short or last a long time, depending on the context. Its function is formal. After a while, the listener needs more variety than simple chord changes within one key can provide. If the modulation is between two keys, but stays in the same mode, the change will be one of color, partly just from the simple fact of moving the tonic elsewhere. Note that moving the tonic like this affects the timbre of the voices and instruments. Vocal register, relatively high or low, influences the perceived musical character. Instruments also respond in different ways to key changes. For example, strings will sound less resonant in D-flat major than they do in G major, since the former key includes almost no open strings, and the latter includes all the open strings. If the note also changes, like from major to minor, the difference in the scales creates an even more noticeable change of character. Examples abound in classical music of themes originally presented in major eventually being heard in minor, and vice versa. And that's the point of at least some modulations, to present material already heard but a new character. A diatonic modulation is defined as one where the new tonic chord is also available in the scale of the old key without alterations. For example, an F minor chord is available in E flat major, so modulating from E flat major to F minor is a diatonic modulation. Diatonic modulations, since they are by definition going to close keys, are easier to achieve smoothly than modulations to more remote keys. We'll discuss the latter in another video. It's important to point out that modulation is a psychological process taking place in time. First, a given key is established, then doubt is cast on it. This creates tension and expectation for the listener. Then the tension and expectation will be partly or fully confirmed. It may also occasionally be not confirmed at all, creating a kind of formal detour. All of these situations have a place in the kinds of emotional voyages that a piece of music provides. Sensitively used, modulation is a very powerful tool for reviving interest. The technical problem at the core of modulation is basically the same as in any other kind of transition. It requires no skill at all to switch keys abruptly, say from C major to F sharp major. Sudden transitions of any kind are useful in inverse proportion to their quantity. The more of them there are, the less effective they become. If big surprises happen too often, they become rather like a novel where every chapter starts off and then something strange happened. By far, most modulations are on the more gradual side. There are two basic aspects of a modulation that determine how smooth it will sound. The first is the distance between the keys, as measured by the number of notes that change between the two scales. A modulation where only one or two accidentals change in the key signature is easier to make gradual than one where five or six accidentals change. In diatonic modulations, the key signatures have only one accidental differing from the preceding key, plus a leading tone if they're in minor. These are the easiest to manage, and indeed in classical music they're by far the most common. The second aspect of a modulation or transition is the amount of time and the number of intermediate steps between the two keys. The most gradual transitions take more time and are best accomplished with little gradual steps. The golden rule for smooth formal transitions of any kind is to change only one thing at a time. Let's look at this in more detail. In our next video, we'll examine the melodic aspect of modulation and then the harmonic side of it. Thank you.